And now from the Freedom First Sports Desk, it's First and Ten with John Apicello, sponsored by... Welcome to our first playoff edition of the big show, Week 12. And with Notre Dame, yes, back in the Commonwealth, we're channeling some Rudy for the postseason. Meantime, you know, in this lifetime, you have to prove nothing to nobody except yourself. Our own Jeff Williamson, while he's already proven his website is the best overall, by all means, check out WSLS.com first and 10, which brings us to proving things to yourself. Tonight, out at Game of the Week, you know, sports a couple of programs that have proven to themselves and now everybody else that they can overcome. What am I talking about? Well, everybody had COVID to deal with, but these two smaller programs had a mountain of it to overcome through the spring, and now, now, Eric Johnson was in Buchanan tonight where we saw redemption with Martinsville and James River in the postseason. Eric. Hey, Yappy, when I talked to you at 6 o'clock, I told you how both of these teams in Region 2C have been kind of slept on, and that's because their record doesn't truly reflect how good they truly can be. Both have been battle-tested, have continued to work hard, which is why they both returned to the postseason for the first time in a long time. And in fact, James River hosting just their second ever postseason matchup tonight at home, but it was Martinsville setting the tone early, barking early with the Jalen Long 12-yard touchdown. They're up 7 to nothing. Later, after a nice turnover, it's a big run from Latrell Hairston, putting them inside the 35 that yielded a field goal for a 10 nothing lead. Coach Bobby Martin not letting up yet. Just before halftime, they strike again. Sean Dickerson, the perfect fade pass to Jameer Eccleston-Smith for the touchdown. It's a 16-0 game. Second half, we had a combination of seven turnovers between both sides. Screenplay on fourth down for James River. Bryson Stokes says no, no. He gets the interception, but hey, look at Martinsville in the red zone. They have a fumble, and it's recovered by the Knights. It's only four minutes left in the game, and then some magic came from James River. A pass over the middle to Jake Benson. A lateral to Ben Bailey for the hook and ladder. 55-yard touchdown. It's now 16-6. to Knights get the ball back yet again. They uncork another big play. Zeal Hammonds deep to Bailey. Inside the five, they would score a touchdown to get within three. But Martinsville recovers the onside kick to escape with the 16-13 victory. It's a team, man. They just, we're not perfect. We don't have anything right, but we are a team. Indeed. And I, I, I saw, I'm just proud of them, proud of my coaches, and we hung in here. I mean, we've been working hard the whole the whole time preparing for this team. I mean, nobody thought we was going to make it. I mean, we just came through and fought, fought as hard as we could. I mean, it's a battle. That's all we can do is play hard and just trust ourselves and trust each other. We're a brotherhood. Improbable win for Martinsville, really an improbable season thus far for them, having not played at all in 2020, of course, and no spring season. They not only made the postseason, they now have a postseason win under their belt. And moving forward, Appy, don't want to give any spoilers away, but we will see perhaps a rematch of a team that they played earlier this season next week. Back to you. All right, sticking with 2C, we all understand at this point the road to a region title runs through defending state champ Appomattox, but Glenver has never been shy about taking on that challenge. That said, Glenver is the one seed, and they were hosting Patrick County tonight. Highlanders quick to get into the holiday spirit, and here comes Kyle Hanks. Little burst, a little attack here, and watch him rip off a 44-yard run. Right there, that's going to set up a couple of plays later. Quarterback Aiden Walk will fake and keep and go straight ahead for six. And we've got a 14-0 Glenver lead. Patrick County would go up top trying to catch up. Mason Anderson is there. Slick pick. He's going to take it all the way down into the red zone. And then it would be Walk giving it to Hanks again for a touchdown. Glenver 56 to 14. What about Floyd County in 2C at the three? Radford. Bobcats are rolling into the stadium. Some fans are ready for Christmas already. It's too soon. We have Thanksgiving first. The Buffaloes quarterback, Caleb Fenton, calling his no number. They're down to the nine yard line. A few plays later, watch Fenton here. Rivet and pivot right there, and he gets in. Floyd leads 7 0. Radford coming back. Quarterback Landon Clark dropping back and launching a 62 yard thing of beauty to Parker Prelo. And the game is now tied at 7 all. And here we go again. Quarterback Landon Clark, he's going to launch yet another one. This one's 61 yards to Marcel Baylor. And all you need to know is Radford would go on to a 47 27 victory. 
The mighty Raiders of Coach Smith get it done over Gretna, 40 to 14. They move on. Here's your bracket. Glenver and Martinsville and Appomattox and Radford. That ought to be an interesting semifinal selection. Meanwhile, the class one. And if you missed Derek Johnson's feature surrounding the Perry McClure Fight and Blues program, Go online and please check it out. That said, one of the top other contenders in 1C is the two seed. That is Giles. The Spartans hosting Eastmont tonight. Single wing. Gage Fleeman around the end and into the house. And Giles had the early lead. Coach Williams has been doing this for quite some time. His staff, these are a loyal, solid bunch, and they get it done. Kalik Saunders, huge hole. You bet. He is in. Giles up 12-0. A little bit later on, hey, they can throw out of this stuff too. Fleeman rolling out, finding Jackson Parcell, and Giles is rolling 47 16. They are victorious. The top seed Galax is a winner. Perry McClure over Narrow. So, as you might have guessed, here it is Galax and George with, and Giles and Perry McClure. We'll have at it in the 1C bracket. Other scores for you. Grundy over Chilhowie. William Campbell wins to advance by two. So the bracket looks like, guess what? They get the top seed Riverheads next. It should be interesting. Who cares what kind of job I did if it doesn't produce results? Well, they've been looking for and finding results all year long at the home of the Blue Demons. We check in there. Both the Titans and Cavaliers know a thing or two about results. One would produce more tonight. And in the Seminole District, one team was left with the ultimate results and an unbeaten record. We check in with the Bulldogs plus this. We're the Giles Spartan cheerleaders. Stay tuned for more first and ten. Let's go Spartans! All right, that is the Bassett Band of Distinction. We're back and we're popping the top on Region 3D. Starting with the top seeded Blue Demons, Coach Alice Wilkins played for Coach Beal. Enough said. That's all I need to tell you. Stanton River at Seaburg tonight. Seaburg 9 and 1, the top seed rolling in, pumped up. Casey Graham to Stefan. Myrtle gets the ball down to the 9. Next play. Myrtle taking it in, 9 yards out. He's rumbling on in. And this one, all Blue Demons. It was 41 to nothing. Stanton River back trying to get something going. This is picked by Travis Altizer, who zigs in and out and returns it to the 13 yard line. Eventually, Seaburg would cash it in. How about 48 to nothing, Christiansburg. Brook, even though Seaburg is now 10 and 1, there's plenty of balance in this region, including the two teams you saw tonight. Hidden Valley, Lord Botetot. Both teams having kind of a tale of two halves. Hidden Valley started out 6 0. Lord Botetot really shifted in the second half of the season, and it made for a great matchup tonight. And the biggest question mark was how was Botetot going to defend the pass? Hidden Valley quarterback Sam Dragovich, notorious for sending it downfield with guys like this one. Braxton Dunning beating the secondary for the score. Titans making it a one-point game early, and then it was their turn on defense. Here's a swarm of blue and gold shutting down that Bonitot run, but it didn't take long for this man to get going. Jakari nicely seeing holes better than the deli counter Swiss cheese. Whoa. How do you like that? Rivaling Eric a little bit, huh? The reformed Cavalier ground game has yet to meet its match. They beat Hidden Valley 41 to 6. Coach Weaver and these guys always do a great job of uh, figuring out how to hit your weak spots and your soft spots. And honestly, it's, it really has benefited us to play this game. You know, we, we continue to have challenges and play games against people that are preparing us each week. And what has really, really, really amazed me about the kids is there's been such a transition to team. And I mean, 100%. I'm so proud of them. That's all. I mean, that's the answer. That's why this is happening. They've all decided to play as a team. Hidden Valley finishes their season 7-4. and four. Botetot moves on to play Christiansburg next week. Happy? Indeed, more 3D action. And when I got here many moons ago, Bassett coach Brandon Johnson was starring on the field. Now he's got Bassett back in the mix as their head coach. And we've seen this matchup before. Magna Vista at Bassett and Jerikas Hairston is their stellar QB opening things up by hitting Elijah Stokes. Later in the drive, it's Hairston finishing the job himself. He is a tower of power 
and he gets in the end zone. And then how about Taheem Klein on the Bengals' next possession? He's a rolling ball of butcher knives this week. Nice run, and he would cash it in to make it 14 0, 49 13. Bassett, your final. What about the seventh seed north side at the two Abingdon tonight? The Falcons are nine and one. Abingdon up 21 nothing second half. North side trying to get back in it. Abingdon defense forcing the fumble by Sid Webb right there. But Abingdon would give it right back. Cole Lambert throwing into the end zone coming up here. It'll be picked off by the Vikings. Austin Slash still 21 nothing. North side gets on the board. Sid Webb, great athlete. We've seen his stuff before, and we're going to see it again. Look at him under pressure. Ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. Ding, 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 da, da, ding, ding. And he gets in the end zone to make a game of it, but this one goes 28-14, Abingdon. So here's what your bracket looks like. LB travels to Christiansburg. Bassett will make the trip to Abingdon. The Seminole District has been a football battle zone all season long tonight. We see if the top seeds coming out of that district can survive in advance. Heritage taking on Waynesboro tonight. First quarter, Pioneers with the ball and Cameron Burns airing it out and connecting with Kenneth Crawford for the 51-yard throw and catch. Two plays later, it's Burns to Crawford again. Nine-yard touchdown pass. Pioneers going up 7-0, still first quarter. Pioneers on third and three. Rajon Booker Felder taking the ball, breaking through the D, setting Heritage up on, at the 10 yard line. This would be first and goal. Couple of plays later, Booker Felder going to punch it on in. Heritage would continue to roll 45 10, your final. What about the three seed Brookville, the Bees, hosting Rockbridge County? The Wildcats coming in at five and five. Up seven and six, late first quarter. Drake McDaniel to Stephen Preston down the sideline. 35 yard touchdown. Bees up 14 6. Next, Brookville possession. Tayshawn Butler going to take the toss outside and going 50. 54 yards to pay dirt. Look at him book. 21-6 Bees. Want to show you the Wildcats and how their night went. Driving deep in Bees territory. They've got a great quarterback in Miller J. Going across the middle for the touchdown. Picked at the last second. That was Drake McDaniel, the quarterback and safety. This one goes to Brookville, 57 to 12. And we pause to honor the top seed LCA. They've run through the season undefeated, handling all comers to the postseason we go with the Bulldogs. And there's the giant Bulldog. And of course, they play on uh, Liberty's campus at Liberty Stadium. And LCA is up 49 nothing when we find them at Wilson, taking on Wilson Memorial. LCA freshman quarterback Jeb Moon bootlegging to the right. Jonathan Thompson to convert a second and 17. Same drive. Moon converts to Dalton Nesselrode. 30-yard gain just outside the end zone. And then we've got a fake toss, and they punch it in. Bulldogs win 56-7. to Meantime, Broadway 22-7 over Turner Ashby. So the 3C bracket looks like this. Broadway is going to travel to LCA and give it their best shot. Meantime, Brookville at Heritage in what is already a seminal district rivalry. Sometimes a winner is a dreamer who just won't quit. In Salem, the Spartans have made dreaming a lifetime occupation. We'll get the latest from them and more when we come back. All right, Eric, Region 4D, the bracket. I saw the biggest changes. We've got Louisa County in there, Western Albemarle, mm -hmm. Orange County. I'm like, what is going on here? Right. Hey, Louisa beats EC Glass last night. They're right. out. So, you know, newcomers and a different feel. Right, you don't know what to expect, really, right. from those teams out east. But what we do know what we can expect is we know it typically runs through Salem. Speaking of Salem hosting Amherst County tonight, a little tune-up perhaps to start the postseason for them. Check out Isaiah Barlow running to the right and out of bounds for the long run here. Just a few plays later for Salem, it's Cam. Oh, Cam. Look at him there for the <laughs> touchdown. 28 nothing. We're rolling in this one. Fourth quarter, it's the quarterback getting in on the action. Deron Wilson drops back, scrambles, tackled near the first down line. It set up another touchdown later in the drive. Just later, it's Salem yet again with the ball at the goal line. It's mm. Barlow yet again in for the score. 35-0 Salem gets the win to open up the postseason. How about G-Dub 
hosting Orange County tonight early in the first quarter on the one yard line. That offensive line pushing through, allowing Donovan Howard to get the first score of the game. Orange County would answer back. Check out the handoff to number 10. Seth Sims runs 54 yards for the touchdown up the left sideline there. However, the Eagles would return the favor. It's Elijah Bridges on the kickoff return. <laughs> Seen this before. Indeed, we have. Oh, here we go. Fly, Eagles, fly. He's yeah. going to go 77 yards, finally taken down. But that set up Mr. Howard yet again. Come on down. Donovan Howard punching it in for the touchdown. 63-21. G-Dub comes up with the win. Other score of note, Western Albemarle takes out. Halifax County 28 to 7. So we're looking at that bracket now. We have a rematch from the 2017 final. Salem okay. against Louisa County. Western Albemarle will get GW Danville. All right, moving on. How about PH with a win at Massaponics tonight? And a quick check of that bracket. Next up, they will travel to Mountain View. And as we know, on Thursday night, Franklin County lost to Western Branch 35-27. VIS AA, St. Michael over Rono Catholic tonight. And North Cross plays tomorrow at 1. Folks, that's going to do it for Week 12. Back next week for the Regent Semis. It was a fine show indeed. We'll see you next week.